This is lesson 2.1, Number Properties. It is on pages 65 through 68 in your workbook. So what rank would corn be if it joined the army? Yeah, if corn. That's right, I said corn. If corn joined the army, what rank would it be? Colonel. Colonel in the army. Moving along. So our learning target on this is we're going to use number properties. Some of you may not even know what those are. You could say, I don't understand yet, but hopefully by the end you'll be a three or a four. And if you're a two, that's okay. I can help you out. All right. Or someone else can help you out, but hopefully you're a three or a four. All righty. Looking back, find the value of each expression. So 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, 9 times 2 is 18, 9 minus 3 is 6, 6 plus 9 is 15, 15 plus 2 is 17, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Alright, so now let's look ahead. Use each number on the game card once. To write an expression that has a value of 24, you can use any of the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right, so 9 times 3 is 27, minus 2 is 25, minus 1 equals 24. Yeah, so in this chapter, we're going to be doing things like this where we multiply and subtract, we're going to divide and add, and we're going to figure out some things about number properties in this lesson and also in this chapter. So let's talk about some number properties in our key concept, use number properties. So I'm just going to go through this, read it to you. You can follow along. We're going to look at the example. So the commutative property, commutative, commutative. Commutative property. Changing the order of add-ins or factors does not change the sum or product. So in other words, you got over here 3 plus 5, 5 plus 3. They're both going to equal 8. You notice that they change their positions. And here too, the 5 and the 3 change the positions. But 3 times 5 and 5 times 3, they're both 15. So commutative property says that their positions changing doesn't change the sum or the product. Associative properties, changing the grouping of add-ins or factors does not change the sum or product. All right, so in this one here with the adding, we get 2 plus 4 plus 1, and then 2 plus 4 plus 1. See the parentheses are around different numbers. It's still going to be 7. All right, and then on the multiplication, 2 times 4 is here, times 1, 2 times 4 times 1. The parentheses are around different numbers, but the product is still going to be the same, still going to be 8. And then the addition property of 0, the sum of any number and 0 is that number. So 8 plus 0, 8. 1,625,824 plus 0 is that same number, because I forgot exactly what I said. Right? So the sum of any number and 0 is that number. Multiplication properties of 0 and 1. The product of any number and 0 is 0. Doesn't matter. 6 trillion, 285 billion, 321 million, 985 times 0 is 0. Any number multiplied by 0 is 0. And then the product of any number and 1 is that number. Any number multiplied by 1 is that number. Right? So 7 times 1 is 7. 900 million times 1, 900 million. Does it matter? It's the same thing. Distributive property. Distributive property is probably one of the hardest ones for, for kids and people to get their mind around. Multiplying a sum or difference by a number is the same as multiplying each number in the sum or difference by the number and adding or subtracting the products. So, let's look at it. 4 times 3 plus 1 is the same as 4 times 3 plus 4 times 1. See, 
we're distributing the 4 to the 3 and the 1. 4 times 3, 4 times 1. 4 times 3 minus 1 is the same as 4 times 3 minus 4 times 1. You're distributing it. You're giving it out. All right? Now, we're going to refer back to this chart when we look at our number properties and when we use them. All right, our in-class practice. Complete the equation, identify the property. So 9 times 15 equals 15 times 9. And that's going to be commutative. Commutative. Now, you don't have to write out property. We, all, we know that all these are going to be properties, but you do need to understand that so that when you see commutative property, you understand what that means. So you just have to write the name of the property, not the word property for now. All right, number two, we got 32 plus 29 plus 8 equals 29 plus, what's missing? 32, all right, and again, it's also commutative. So looking back at my key concept chart there, I can see which property to use for these equations, all right? So I want you 3, 4, 5, and 6. 3, 4, 5, and 6, I want you to look at those, look back at that chart, and see if you can do these. All right, go ahead and do 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then we'll go over it. All right, so on this one, well, we got a number missing, don't we? It's 145, and it's also commutative. I do want you to notice that each of these are commutative properties, but this is the commutative property of multiplication, addition, and addition. All right, so let's make sure we know that as well. All right, and number four, we get 248 plus zero equals 248, and then it is what? It's the addition property of zero. All right, and then what do we have here? Well, we've, we're distributing it, aren't we? 3 to the 10 and 3 to the 2, so it is the distributive property, all right? And then this one right here, we got 1 times 17 equals 17, and it is the multiplication property of 1. All right, so again, we're just looking at that chart and figuring out from the chart what property these are. All right, so number seven and eight, we're going to use the distributive property. Look back at that distributive property. The distributive property, we're distributing the numbers, right? So we've got five times 97. Well, if we use our expanded form of 97, it's going to be 90 plus 7. Right? And it's going to equal 5 times 90, we're distributing it, and then 5 times 7. I want you to try number 8. Try number 8 and then we'll go over it. Alright, we're going to have 80 and 3. So this is going to be 80 times 7 times 7 plus... 3 times 7. Alright, that's I'm gonna clean that times 7 up over here on the 80. So 80 times 7 plus 3 times 7. We've got 80, 3, so 80 and 3. That's the distributive property. Alright, I'm gonna try number 9 with you, and then I want you to try Number 10 on your own. All right, so use your property to find the sum of product. All right, so I am going to use the associative property because it doesn't matter where the parentheses are. See, I could do 4 plus 6 plus 27. 4 plus 6 plus 27. So 6 plus 27 is 33. 33 plus 4 is 37. And again, I used the associative property. the associative property. All right, go ahead and do number 10.
Give another 10 and we'll, we'll, we'll go over it. All right, so anything times zero is zero. So I'm going to use the multiplication property of zero. The multiplication property of zero. Now, I could have used the distributive property because I could have distributed 5 to 49 and 5 to zero. It's still going to be zero. So I think that the easiest one to use is the multiplication property of zero. Right, so on number 11, I want you to do this matching. All right, use the chart on page uh, 66. Use the chart on page 66. But do this matching and then we'll go over it. All right, so 27 plus 0 equals 27. We get an addition property of 0. Addition property of 0. 13 times 0 is the multiplication property of 0. All right, 9 plus 14 equals 14 plus 9 is the commutative property. All right, and then all this stuff, <laughs> right, we got the distributive property. Ah, someone may have thought it was associative property. No, we're distributing. We're distributing. We're not just moving around parentheses. We're distributing that 2 to the 3 and that 2 to the 5. All right, and then 28 times 1 would be the multiplication property of 1 and then we're moving around those parentheses so that is the associative property all right so let's connect what we've learned to data all right so an example a sanctuary has three types of large cats find a total number of large cats all right so they got lions they got one two three oh actually they each one represents four so four times three see because each one is four each of those paws is four so four times three distributed property four times six see one two three four five six and then four times four one two three four and then we add that two because there's four whole paws and one half paw, so that half paw is two, all right? And so we do all this math, and it gets down to 54 large cats. So there are 54 large cats in the sanctuary. I hope you see that. See, four times three is 12, four times six is 24, four times four is 16, and then we add that too. All righty. Here's what we're going to do. I want you to look at number 13. Read number 13. Make sure you're checking out our table here. All right. And then find the total number of small cats. Go ahead and do that. And then we'll go over it. And, and let, me, let me tell you, you can do it any way you want. All right. Any, any kind of property you want to use, you can go ahead and do that. And then we'll go over it. All right. So here's what I did. I'm counting up the paws. There's one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then how many half paws were there? Two. So one, two, and two half paws makes a whole. So 17. And then how many did it represent? Four. 17 times four. So 17 times four. I did four times seven is 28. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so there are 68 small cats, alright, that's how I did it, right, I'm basically taking my 4 and distributing it to all this, and then adding those two together to make that a whole as well, alright, alrighty. Conduct a survey to find the type and number of pets that each student in your class has. Organize the data in a pictograph, picture graph, then use a property to find the total number of pets. And here is what I'm going to tell you. I did my own survey and this is what I found. So I want you to take that survey and find out the total number of pets in that class. 
All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine circles. Nine circles represents two pets each. So nine times two, we've got 18 pets. Now, you know, I could have made it complicated and done and written it out as what I actually did in my head because what I was doing in my head is going two times four plus two plus three. That's actually what I was doing in my head because I added them up, four plus two plus three, four plus two plus three, and then I multiplied by two. So I'm distributing two to the four, to the two, and to the three, right? Because it's eight plus four plus six is going to be 18. Well, I just did it simply like this, nine times two, because four plus two plus three. Alrighty, well, let's look back at our learning target. Use number properties. Hope you can do that now. And again, please use that reference, okay? Please use that reference chart so that you can more easily identify them, right? I can identify number properties and equations, and I can use number properties to write equivalent expressions, all right? Hopefully, you can do that. And you know what? If you can't, again, still love you, and we'll just practice some more together. Have a good one.